For those of you who follow me on my Facebook page, and if you're not following me on Facebook, why aren't you? The address is facebook.com, the number one, and then databits. Don't forget the forward slash in there. But those of you who have been watching me on there have noticed that I have purchased my very first player piano. The asking price was $300. This is quite a sophisticated gadget. It is ran by pneumatics, and pneumatics, of course, involve air. So inside of this machine is a pump with a bunch of little tubes, and those tubes each connect to keys on the keyboard, which produce sound. Now, before we show off the insides of the piano, we need to get rid of some stuff off the top because the top is like the hood of a car. So let's begin. All right, now that our lid has been opened, our hood, we can now take a tour of the inside of the mechanics of this particular piano. So this is a, uh, as I said earlier, an Aeolian piano, and this Aeolian has a unique feature, and that feature is called Ukulano. And there's a label right here on the front of the piano indicating that, but uh, we'll show you that here shortly. You can see all these tubes. For every tube you see here, there is a connection to one of the keys on the keyboard. Back behind all of these tubes are the strings. And what you'll see here is the stuff that really makes this stuff happen. And that is these hammers that are each hitting a key. And there's actually three strings for each key that it hits or each note. And uh, we just had this tuned recently, so that was part of the holdup for me to make this video, was getting it tuned. So there's a series of bellows and mechanics that make all of this possible, and you'll see it in action here shortly. In the center here is where your piano roll goes. So the piano roll has a series of holes on it, and each hole corresponds to a hole on the sound bar here. So each little note across the keyboard has its own corresponding hole. When the hole is exposed, it causes one of the keys to hit or strike the strings on the back of the unit. So that's where all the fun happens, and we'll spend some time looking at this part as it does its thing. But you put the roll on here, and uh, it has its own automatic take-up system. It has some little hooks here that you hook the roll onto, and back in the back is a switch that detects whether or not there's something on here. And if that switch is flipped, then the machine will take off or stop if it's, uh, it's been released. But, uh, you'll see in action as the player piano plays. And we'll go ahead and show you this piece here it's on the front, so you just saw the bar for it. So this is our Ukulano, and if I pull on this lever, it corresponds to this bar that's on the back. See it moving up and down there? And attached to the right end of it, or the center and off to the right, is a bunch of little tassels that are hanging on there. And so you can see them here, hanging off of there. And it kind of gives the piano a, an almost a harpsichord kind of sound to it. So very, very cool, very interesting to listen to. And uh, we'll just kind of pan across so you can see all the cool stuff inside of here. According to the guy who tuned this thing, says he really does not enjoy tuning it simply because all of this mechanism is hanging out in front of all of those little connectors there, those little tuners, tuner dials. Uh, you can see here, each one of these is attached to a string, and every one of those has to be adjusted in some cases in order to tune the piano. Just on the underside of the keyboard here on the right is an electrical switch. This is what activates the pump that you hear on the inside. You'll hear it taking off once we actually start playing a roll. And just down from there is a really interesting thing. This is a place where 
petals are kept, and they're kept behind a hidden door. So I open the hidden door, and behind it are petals. And I can pull the petals down and actually do the pumping with my feet. Now, back in the early days, this was the only way to play a player piano. There was no electric pump. You had to do all the work yourself. So there's even a little handlebar up here for you to hold on to. Put your hands behind it and do the, do the flapping with your feet and get the machine going. So, uh, and then over here is what we saw earlier, and that's the other control for the, the ukulano happening right here. For our demonstration, we are going to use a little song called A Young Man's Fancy Music Box Song, and you'll see the copyright there at the bottom of your screen. It's from 1920. And so we place the piano roll on the left, and then pop it in on the right. So then we take the piano roll, roll it across the sound bar, and then it hooks onto one of these little hooks down at the take-up spindle. And then what I'm going to do is turn it, turn the roll manually a couple of times until it has rolled at least one complete turn around that take up. And that's going to activate the switch that's on the underside of that. We are ready to turn everything on and it's going to be twofold. I'm going to flip this switch to the left. At the same time, I'm going to switch the power switch that I showed you earlier. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with this demonstration of Canadian Sunset, one of my favorite QRS roles. I hope you enjoy it, and you'll hear it in stereo. And please subscribe, share this video with a friend, and leave some comments below, and we'll see you next time. But first, here's Canadian Sunset.